Everybody, welcome to another episode here at Fast Tracks Live. My name is Paul Abernathy. Welcome to the video stream. Today lesson, we're going to be talking about a change that took place between the 2020 and the 2023 edition of the National Electrical Code. You know, I get asked all the time, why do we have changes in the code every three years? And sometimes we just miss stuff or maybe new technology or maybe a little more clarity gets presented to get a code changed. Now remember, we as code panel members don't sit there and just create code. Now we can do what's called committee inputs, but generally it's based on something that's submitted by you, the public. Electricians, engineers, the general public who may utilize the National Electrical Code, all of you can be a part of the code development process. You got to remember, uh, this is a version of the NEC that was back from 1940. Okay, some of you would like to have it that thin and fit in your back pocket. Uh, the problem is technology is constantly changing. And so as part of that, we get new requirements and we learn what we didn't know to help make things safer. Uh, the expansion of things like GFCI and AFCI and, and surge protected devices. And uh, we get a better understanding of the operation of overcurrent protected devices. And we start changing and adding things to the code. Well. If you're like me and you constantly have to stay up on these things, you always want to know if there's a change that can impact you. And in today's lesson, there is one that can impact you if you're taking an electrical exam. Now, it's also going to impact you if you're out in the field, okay? Because it's all part of a calculation. But today we're going to talk about folks that are doing a load calculation and they're doing a standard type of load calculation, which is part three of article 220, not the optional method, it's part four standard type method, the, the universal method, we should say, because we don't call it standard in the code. We just call it part three. There's the optional method in part four. So you all know that if you're taking an exam, you always want to use the part three, the, the general, the standard method, we'll call it. Uh, unless they state otherwise, then you would use the optional if they tell you to. Uh, in the real world, you're always going to probably use the optional method because it's going to result in a smaller service, Okay, and that is again the best optimum uh, for your customer. It costs less, smaller conductors, things like that, right? Um, but when it comes to the neutral conductor, you've got to know how to calculate it because you only really have two choices here. If you do the optional method and you size your conductors, then you're basically, if you don't wanna do the calculation, then you just size it the same size as the ungrounded high conductors and you move on your merry way. Or if 310.12 is applicable, and that's the 83% rule, then obviously you can use that allowance for the conductor sizing, whether it's the optional or standard, okay? And so maybe your neutral is the same size, or, or maybe you're gonna use service entrance cable, and it already has a grounded neutral conductor pre-sized in it. And since it's a dwelling unit, there is enough diversification, and you know the neutral loads are typically gonna be less than what it would be for the ungrounded hot conductor sizing. So maybe that's the theory of what you go by. It's important to me that you understand how to do these calculations. Now in our fast track program, we teach you how to do this. We also have Wednesday nights that you can come to and ask us any question you want. Uh, we have mobile apps that allow you to ask us questions directly on the mobile app. It's a free download uh, with message boards and all kinds of calculators. But when it comes to exams, number one, always assume the standard method or part three of 220 versus the optional unless they tell you otherwise, okay? All right, so what's the change I'm talking about that you need to be aware of? It really is a change of one word and it makes a significant impact on how it's applied in the code. So let's go look at it. So here we are, this is 
to the 2020 edition of the NEC. Now, when we're talking about a calculation, we're talking about the neutral or service neutral load, okay? The basic calculation, all we're trying to do is size that feeder or service neutral load to the maximum unbalanced load that's basically determined by this article, which is 220. So we're gonna do our calculation like you're doing. If you're doing it under part three, you're doing a calculation. Now you notice that 220.61, that is under part three. See, because if I scroll down, you see here's part four for the optional. It's not under the optional. It is under part three. And I'll go back up here to show you what part three states. Just so you can see, here's part three. So that is just the generic, we call it the standard method, but it is the method that you use and you're allowed to use part four as an optional method. But on an exam, remember, they don't state otherwise, we're gonna be using the standard part three is what we're gonna be focusing on. All right, let's get back down to, so we can look at this neutral calculation. So what has changed? All right, so the concept of it hasn't changed in the sense that, okay, this is a permitted reduction. So let's say you do the load calculation for everything and now you've got your neutral contribution. Well, obviously your three VA per square foot, that's gonna be counted because that's 120 volt loads. That's a neutral load. There's a neutral there. Your small appliance brand circuits, absolutely. There's a neutral load associated. Your laundry circuit, the minimum required for that, there's obviously neutral. So all of those have a neutral contribution. But when you get down to things like the ranges, cooktops, uh, clothes dryers, counter mounted cooktops, uh, I think I said that, uh, ovens, things like that, well, you have a neutral load there, typically for like the timers or the electronics or, or something like that. Well, what you have now is the ability to apply 70% demand factor to those loads that you calculate for the size of the ungrounded conductors when you're doing that calc for those conductors. Well, once you establish what the range is or the dryer is, now you, for the neutral, you get to apply a 70% demand to that. Now, where does it say that? Well, right here, here's your permitted reduction. It's allowing you to take that amount that you typically would use to size the hot conductors, right? It allows you to take that and now do a demand factor of 70%. So it says a service or feeder supplying the following loads shall be permitted to have an additional demand factor of 70% applied to the amount in 220.61B1, which down here, see it says household ranges, counter uh, wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, and electric dryers, right? And it says where the maximum unbalanced demand has been determined in 220.55, that's your range table, or 220.54, that's your dryer table, okay? So when you do that under your standard calculation, Whatever the final VA is, ultimately that's for sizing your ungrounded hot conductors, but you take that value now and I can apply a 70% to that, right? You've been doing that forever. The difference here is this is the 2020. So by some weird chance, let's say that in that load calculation for the neutral, your load, even if you did take the range in the dryer in a counter mounted cooking unit, like a cooktop, even if you did take that at 70%, if the value was over 200 amps for the neutral contribution, then under the 2020 edition, you would not be able to apply 70% to that value that's over 200 amps because of this or. Because here it says you either apply 220.61B1, which is what you did, applying the 70% to those appliances, cooking appliances, or the clothes dryer, or you can apply the 70% to the portion that is what? In accordance with 220.61B2, and that is the amount that is over 200 amps. So you couldn't apply both of them. Now, in the real world, chances are with a dwelling, you're never going to apply B2 because neutral contribution is probably never going to be over 200 amps unless you have some just big, huge mansion with all these different things. And I guess it could uh, come into play. But most of the time, it's not. So this is why people really don't pay attention to it. But if I'm writing you an exam question, I might focus on the fact that I would want you to apply the 70% to those cooking appliances as well as a clothes dryer, but then I might have an overall neutral load that is over 200 amps 
And when you read this and you don't pay attention to that or, then you might apply both. And that would be wrong under the 2020 and the 2017 and previous editions because of that or in there, right? So even if that doesn't make sense, you're like, well, wait a minute, I, I should be able to apply this to both of them. So why can't I? Well, under the 2020, because of that or, you cannot. So that's why now let's look at what it says in the 2023 edition of the NEC. And this is why understanding code changes are so important. So let's go down to 2020 and let's go to the 2023 uh, edition. Now, by the way, I'm using Link. If you haven't figured that out by now, Link is a product from NFPA that allows you to get access to all the codes on your phone, on your desktop, laptop, tablet. One login, you get it everywhere. It's amazing. I think it's like 125. I, trust me, I don't get any money. I'm not an affiliate of NFPA. I'm probably the last person that NFPA would want as an affiliate. But it is a great program, uh, and it really works neat, and that's what we're using here today. Okay. All right, so in here... Everything else is the same. The only difference down here is you see some changing in how this is worded. Now, notice right here, grayed out. That is where the or used to be. Now it says and. Why is that significant? Well, because you have to understand the power of or. We've been teaching people this for decades. In a code, when you're dissecting it, if something says this, and that, as far as a separation of code requirements, then it, it's telling you you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Whereas if it says or, it means, hey, you can do this or you can do that. Both of, both of them would meet the intent. So that's important to understand. So here in the 2023 edition, by adding the and and removing the or, it says, you know what? You can apply the 70% for the neutral for the ranges, counter-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, uh, excuse me, wall-mounted ovens, or even clothes dryers, right? You can apply the 70%, but if you still have over 200 amps of neutral contribution, you can also apply the 70% to the portion that exceeds 200 as well, okay? Does that make sense? So I think that the and is really important because if you're taking an exam, I might give you a question that has the total neutral contribution over 200 amps, even after you've already applied the 70% to the range, ovens, cooking unit, countertop cooking units, cooktops, and clothes dryers. I might have a neutral load that still exceeds 200 for exam reasons. You know, on an exam, it doesn't have to be common sense, right? It's just whatever they want to give you, and you have to answer it. Well, then you need to know that in the 2020, I can't do it if I already applied it to the cooking appliances in the clothes dryer, that I can't apply it to the amount that's over 200. I can't do that. Whereas in the 2023, I can do that. I can apply both B1 and B2. Why? Because of the and. All right? Okay, so, you know, maybe just subtle. And, and also, I, I, I got to let you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't also remind you that for most other than dwelling applications, commercial applications, uh, office buildings and all that kind of stuff anyway, well, you're obviously not gonna have a B1. Chances are they're not gonna have a clothes dryers or probably not gonna have uh, those type of cooking appliances that are listed there. And if that's the case, then you would ignore B1 anyway, and you're simply going to apply the 70% to the value that's over 200. So you're gonna be using B2 anyway. So just keep that in mind. For my fast track students, be careful because our questions are written like that. So if you're in the 2020, be careful because we try to get you. And if you're in the 2023 edition, we also try to get you to make sure that you understand when you're calculating the neutral load, when you can and when you can't apply both B1 or B2 or when you can only apply B1 or if you can only apply B2, okay? All right, so that's why it's so important to understand changes in the National Electrical Code. That one word change could get you on an electrical exam. All right, all right, folks, till next time, stay safe, God bless, and catch you on another episode.